By the year 541, Justinian the Great's armies had reconquered much of the territory lost with the Western Roman Empire's collapse. The conquest had led Justinian to begin to consolidate and reintegrate the West into the Roman world. It appeared as if all was well. Justinian's empire started massive infrastructure projects, trade started to grow, and economic development began to take hold. This would all be stopped, however, when the first plague began to spread. The bubonic plague holds a near mythical status in the minds of historians and the world at large. The iconography of the plague doctor masks, or the streets choked with bodies, is instantly recognizable to anyone. The plague encounter between the years 1347 and 1353 was not the first time the world had encountered this foe. In the year 541, and lasting to the year 549, the plague of Justinian, or the first plague pandemic as some call it, raged and ravaged the early medieval world. This documentary will be separated into three distinct parts. How and where the plague spread, its epidemiology, and its lasting impact. According to the Byzantine historian Procopius, the plague was first reported in the port town of Pelusium. From there, it spread in two directions. To the east, the Cycnids made its way into Palestine, along the land trading routes for grain and other vital goods. From Palestine, it moved into Syria, Anatolia, and by the year 542, the plague was found in Constantinople, where it would wreak havoc for the next year. At its heyday, the epidemic was killing 5,000 people per day in the great city. By the time the plague had run its course, 20% of the whole city had perished. Even Justinian, in his grand palace looking out over the magnificent city, caught the plague. He fell into a deep coma, and many did not believe he would awake. Thankfully for his empire, the great leader did recover, and wouldn't continue to lead his people. The devastation was not only contained to the eastern part of the empire. From Alexandria's port, the plague found its way into Italy, southern Gaul, and then the Iberian Peninsula. On land, it burned a path across North Africa. The epidemic finally moved into northern Europe, and then southeast into the Arabian Peninsula, where it would wreak havoc until the year 549. While this year did mark the official end of the pandemic, pockets of the disease would be around until 750. Historians have theorized for a long time that the plague may have been caused by a type of Yersinia pestis, which is the same bacteria that causes the bubonic plague. Historians could not be sure, however, because there are multiple different types of the plague. There were traces found of the pneumonic plague and the septicemic plague. Recently, a tomb in Bavaria from the 6th century was found, and scientists could isolate the bacteria that caused the bubonic plague. The discovery confirmed the already theorized pathogen behind the epidemic. The big question is, how did it spread? I already have mentioned how the plague spread along the trade routes that were prevalent at the time. The bacteria that caused the bubonic plague was spread via fleas that attached themselves to the black rat. The rat spread very quickly, and fed on the abundance of grain stored in North Africa's massive warehouses. North Africa was the largest source of grain for the surrounding Mediterranean provinces and countries at this point in history. The rats would feed on the grain and hitch rides on the caravans or ships that would carry it worldwide. This explains how the bacteria moved from city to city. The bacteria itself was very contagious and would cause acute sickness upon infection. These characteristics made the bubonic plague that spread during this time a deadly concoction of illness and death. In all, it is estimated that between 25 and 50 million people died during the initial outbreak, with the death toll gradually growing to nearly 100 million over the next 200 years. The population surrounding the Mediterranean Sea decreased by about 60%. There are three primary outcomes of this disease. The first and most immediate impact was the death of a large amount of productive and young workers. This depleted the Byzantine armies and caused a massive economic recession. The second significant impact was the instability that was caused by the sudden lack of a workforce. In some places, public services or governments began to struggle or even ceased to exist altogether. 
The longest lasting impact was the destruction it caused to the internal Byzantine state. The plague weakened the empire, and combined with the ongoing wars with Sassanid Persia, set the stage for Islam's rise and started the long and slow decline for the Byzantine Empire. In Europe, the plague halted the state building and prevented the Byzantines from cementing their hold over the newly conquered Italian peninsula. This left it open for the Lombards to conquer most of the territory for themselves. I hope you enjoyed this new episode of Lesser Known History, beginning the series called the Epidemic Archive, where over time we will take a look at all the different plagues that have affected humanity and the stories of the people that lived through them all. If you did enjoy, please hit that like button, comment down below what your favorite part was, and like the video. If I've earned it enough, hit that subscribe button, and remember to hit the notification bell to be updated for whenever I upload new content. With that being said, I hope you all have a great day, and I will see you in the next video.